our planet can destroy us. Immense forces trapped beneath the surface could explode at any time and unleash hell. Beneath our feet lies our greatest enemy. It is also our greatest ally. We built civilization with material from inside the Earth. Its story is our story. This coal mine in the American heartland is our entry. Fifteen meters. Forty-five meters. Seventy meters below the Illinois cornfields. Light, life, everything that's familiar, safe lies behind us. Ahead, darkness, danger, the unknown. This is no ordinary coal mine. Fossilized leaves and plants cover the ceiling. This was once a living forest. Now it's solid rock buried inside the earth. To understand what happened here, we need to step back in time. Three hundred million years ago, this was a dense, humid jungle. Giant trees towered 30 meters above the forest floor. An earthquake sank the ground level. turned the forest into lake. Mud engulfed the trees like flies trapped in amber. Over millions of years, the mud turned to stone. The weight of the stone pressed the forest like flowers in a book and squeezed out water and hydrogen. Heat from the core and from the decaying material itself cooked the vegetation. All that's left is carbon. Over hundreds of millions of years, pressure and heat transformed this forest into a giant fossil made entirely of coal. The fossil forest is 70 meters underground. Thousands of kilometers and trillions of tons of solid rock lie ahead. To reach the core, we'll have to smash our way through the Earth's crust. Through kilometers of compacted rock that encase our planet.
five kilometers at its thinnest, 70 where it's thickest. Most of the crust is solid, but not all. nearly 240 meters beneath the New Mexico desert. A natural tunnel. And something else. Ghostly albino bugs that dwell in permanent darkness. With no light to see by or be seen, they don't need eyes. With no sun, there's no need for camouflage. Entire species may exist nowhere else on Earth, except in this cave. We're like invaders in an alien world. We could still turn back. Yet around the next corner, A chamber, so vast, an aircraft carrier could park in here with room to spare. Sixty meters down. One hundred and eighty. Two hundred and seventy-five. This is the nearest thing to visiting another planet. Less than half a kilometer inside our own. A cave full of giant crystals. 300 meters beneath Mexico's Chihuahuan Desert. Some crystals are as long as a bus. They're as soft as fingernails and sharper than razors. The cave is breathtaking, but deadly. At 50 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity, Sweat can't evaporate. The body can't shed heat. Moist air collects in the lungs. Cells overheat. After 20 minutes, even with an ice suit and respirator, you begin to drown. We're 300 meters inside the Earth's crust. 
beneath Southern California. Three hundred and sixty five meters down. Four hundred and sixty meters inside the Earth's crust. Layer upon layer of rock, each with a story to tell. Marble made of ancient sea creatures, heated, compressed, and heated again. These layers are the pages in our planet's story, made up of dust, mud, vegetation, even animal life that was laid down over millions of years. Sandstone, the compressed remains of a long forgotten desert. As wind and water move material around the planet, new layers built up above. One layer buried another and another, squeezing the material beneath until they turned to rock. Basalt, once a mighty volcano ground down by wind and rain. This layer isn't like the others. It's thinner and seems to go on forever. It contains an element called iridium. Iridium is rare on Earth, but abundant in space. Nearly 600 meters inside the Earth's crust, a layer of space rock. 550 meters beneath Denver, Colorado, we've discovered a layer of extraterrestrial rock. Once this rock sat on the surface, which means Denver was covered in space dust. It sounds like science fiction, but the reality is even stranger. An asteroid bigger than an entire city. Sixty-five million years ago, it plunged straight towards Earth, to a planet ruled by dinosaurs, where T-Rex reigned unchallenged. He was as heavy as an elephant. His meter-long jaw was engineered for maximum bone-crushing action. And he had no predators. Nothing could unseat this Lizard King. But 2,400 kilometers to the south, a storm was brewing. The asteroid struck off Mexico's Yucatan coast. And released the energy of 100 million atomic bombs. At the point of impact, temperatures reached 20,000 degrees Celsius. Hot enough to vaporize the Earth's crust. Every living thing within a 500 kilometer radius. And the asteroid itself. The impact smashed them all into a towering dust cloud. couldn't escape the Earth's gravity. It smothered the entire planet. A local disaster became a global catastrophe.
Across North America, day turned to night. For months. With no sunlight, plants perished. The plant eaters starved. The meat eaters died. The dinosaurs, arguably the planet's biggest, most successful species ever, were finished. This thin layer of rock, 550 meters deep, is a prehistoric killer. 65 million years ago, it killed the dinosaurs and wiped out 75% of all life. This is more than a mission to the core. It's a journey through the Earth's past. Band of red rocks. They're full of rust. Nearly two kilometers down, it's a working mine shaft. We're 3.9 kilometers below South Africa, inside the world's deepest mine. No person has ever ventured deeper than this point. We've reached the frontier of human exploration. Intense heat makes it impossible to travel farther. The rock face is at least 60 degrees, hot enough to burn the skin from our fingers. The weight of nearly four kilometers of solid rock above brings a constant risk of collapse. But it's worth the risk. The rock looks unremarkable. But it's hiding something spectacular. Two point eight billion years ago, hot water trapped inside the Earth since the planet's formation cracked the rock. The water released microscopic mineral particles. They formed a vein of quartz and in it, gold. This is real life alchemy. Gold has captivated mankind for millennia. It won't tarnish, discolor, or crumble. It's exceptionally malleable. A single ounce of gold can be beaten to a sheet 90 meters square.
And above all, it's beautiful. Every gram of gold, even the gold in your wedding ring, started life billions of years ago, far from Earth in an exploding star. In a supernova, an explosion so intense it fused atoms into gold. Microscopic gold particles blasted out into space, mixed with rocks and dust, to form our planet. It's this gold dust we mine today, nearly four kilometers down. In this mine, most of the gold is scattered throughout the rocks. One ton of rock will yield less than a sugar cube of gold. Possibly half of all living things live inside the Earth's crust. Three point nine kilometers beneath the surface. The crust is in Aladdin's cave full of treasure. And surprise. Over hundreds of thousands of years, microscopic mineral particles formed clusters. Then, something extraordinary happened. Out of a random, turbulent process, order emerged. One silicon atom bonded to four oxygen atoms, over and over again, to form a complex framework of six-sided prisms. The result is quartz, one of the most abundant minerals on Earth. The sand on the beach, the glass in our windows, even the circuits in our mobile phones are all made of quartz. Iron impurities made this quartz purple. It's an amethyst. Sapphires. Rubies. Emeralds. It takes millions of years of wind, rain, and tectonic plate movements to bring them near the surface. But for every gem we find, there must be tons buried never to be seen. We're nearly four kilometers down. Mankind has looked into distant space, visited the deepest ocean, but no human has ventured beyond this point. It's time to enter the unknown. We're deeper than any human has ever traveled. Four kilometers inside the Earth's crust, beneath the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. Around us, a layer of rock hundreds of kilometers wide over one and a half kilometers thick. It's salt. 
trillions of tons of salt. We use it to grit our roads, flavor our food. In fact, without salt, we'd die. But how did trillions of tons of salt wind up here, beneath the ocean? Sealed below the salt, five and a half kilometers down, a layer of porous sandstone full of a thick black liquid. We've struck oil. More than coal, gemstones, even gold. This is the underworld's greatest gift to us. Oil dominates our lives more than any other geological substance. And every time we turn the ignition, we do so thanks to a chain of events that stretch back 155 million years. Five million years after the salt pan formed, there was a prehistoric sea here. Home to trillions upon trillions of microscopic plants and bacteria. Plankton. They're the ocean's smallest creatures, and feeding on them was the largest. At 25 meters long or more, this monster, called Lidzikthes, is the largest fish ever to have lived. What the plankton lacked in size, they made up for in volume. Shallow seas bathed in sunlight and bursting with nutrients created perfect conditions for plankton to thrive. Dead plankton formed a thick layer of organic ooze on the ocean floor. Slowly, mud, silt and sand piled up above the dead plankton, squeezing and heating them into a rich organic rock called black shale. Over millions of years, the shale went on heating and cooking, just enough to turn the dead plankton into liquid. This liquid is full of hydrogen and carbon. These hydrocarbons contain more energy than virtually any other known substance. This is crude oil, a fossil fuel. Like a sponge, the porous sandstone soaked up the oil and the salt above sealed the oil inside the sandstone, where it stayed, trapped. Until someone found a way to reach it, over three and a half kilometers beneath the floor of the Gulf of Mexico. All the world's oil from this reserve to the oil fields of Siberia and the Middle East was formed in this way. Oil is the remarkable result of an extraordinary journey that leads from prehistoric plankton to the petrol in your car's tank. Five and a half kilometers into our 6,400 kilometer journey, 
to the Earth's core. As we travel through the crust, we realize its story is our story. Oil, coal, iron, salt, gold. Their stories reveal the debt our civilization above the surface owes to the hidden world below. <laughs>